Welcome to our course on chakras. This is the lesson about the second chakra. So, as you have heard in the first part of the course, chakras have a location and also a shape from which we can determine several things. So the location of the first chakra is just below the navel and the first chakra extends forward for about 30-40 centimeters and it also extends backward for a similar distance in the normal body. So besides that the chakra also has a width and the chakra can be relatively narrow or relatively wide and as I explained before a very wide chakra has a tendency to yeah focus on many different things at the same time while a very narrow chakra tends to focus on just one thing at the same time. So in case of the second chakra which is the desire chakra it creates either a very specific desire or a very general desire. So if I have a very broad wide uh, chakra it can be like gosh I would like something to eat or I would like something to drink and basically anything whether it is really nice and tasty from a three-star restaurant or it is from the McDonald's it doesn't matter you want it you are satisfied by it if you have a very narrow second chakra it is very specific so I want to have dark chocolate from the Lindt brand and nothing else nothing else will do also you have a very specific desire and only that specific thing can satisfy your desire so we often find that people who have a very narrow second chakra they tend to commit a lot into getting it and they are very specific in what they want but because they put in also the extra effort to get that very thing they desire uh, they're usually quite successful while people who have a very broad second chakra they tend to be easily satisfied uh, so there tend to be people who are more relaxed, more slow, uh, usually less vigorous, uh, taking it easy, enjoying the good life and in what you could say uh, um, social terms they're the less successful people like they don't have such high ambitions so and because the ambitions are lower they tend not to yeah, put so much effort into climbing as much uh, ultimately these people also tend to be more easily satisfied, they tend to be more content, more at peace, more at ease than the other people who are more high strung. And this brings us to another um, trait of the second chakra, that it is very strongly connected to the life force. So if I never get anything what I want, I get no food, I get no drink, I get no sleep, I get no rest, I get no sex, uh, I get no pleasure, then very quickly my life force will yeah, collapse. I will go into a depression and roll over and die. Um, the opposite is also true. So if I'm desiring something and I manage to get that, so for instance you're in love, with somebody and after like a very long time you will finally see uh, your lover again you will finally have your heart's desire this gives a really strong boost to the second chakra and also to your whole life force you'll be awake for three days you can't sleep but you'll still feel powered energized by your second chakra so the second chakra is very essential and one of the problems which happens as people age is also that they start satisfying their desires and when we're young we're full of dreams and also spiritually we're full of karma which has to be satisfied so we have things we want to achieve in this life we want to do in this life but usually when we get into our 40s we have to either we will have completed these goals 
or we will have to acknowledge our defeat and say like okay it's not going to happen I just can't do it or it's too difficult or blah 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 and usually from 40 onward the second chakra therefore also starts to weaken um, because there is less to be desired and the other things we get they are more or less standard you've experienced food before you've experienced sex before you've experienced different types of uh, wines before uh, different types of sights before so there's less of a stimulus there's less of a need in the second chakra so the second chakra tends to weaken a bit and this is also a general process that the lower chakras tend to weaken as we grow older while the higher chakras tend to strengthen as we grow older. The second chakra in this case also has a kind of a competition you could say. So the second chakra is all about desire and it is ultimately very selfish and what is in a way holding back your desires why don't you just grab the cookie uh, from somebody else's plate is the heart chakra the heart chakra allows us to connect with other people with other beings to understand how they feel and to yeah, sympathize with them so you don't grab that cookie from the other person's plate because you realize that they also want the cookie and that they will be unhappy if they take the cookie if you take the cookie so ideally of course these two can yeah find a way where both will be happy maybe you can share the cookie or you can trade for the cookie so that both of you will be happier the other person might want something they like more but in the first instance there is a competition between the two because the first the lower chakras they tend to act more quickly and the higher chakras tend to in a way block or slow down the lower chakras a bit so the desire wells up in the second chakra and then the heart says like oh wait a minute let's do this in a good way in a right way so that nobody gets hurt and that we become sensitive and ultimately your second chakra has to slow down a bit so this is also what you find in for instance if you're uh, looking at partners so um, for instance some men or some women have a very well developed second chakra so they are very sexually active um, they have a very strong sex drive they often have a very strong uh, drive for any activities they are very active with sports they're physically active they're also active in their careers um, but because the second chakra is so strong and it is so strong because it is not hampered by the heart chakra so much that although these people are very attractive often relationships tend not to work out well because the person is really on their own track doing their own thing and not really caring or stopping uh, to consider what other people want and the opposite is also true if you get a partner who's very caring and loving and compassionate um, then they tend not to be really leaders they're not inspiring you and dragging you along they're just you know like pampering you or caring for you um, and their vibrational level is also different they're not desiring you physically uh, but they're more sympathizing with you on an emotional level and so it's very important to strike a healthy balance between the second chakra and between the heart chakra the other thing about the chakras is also if they're more or less tilted so if you look at the chakra from where it originates and from where it is going to it should be more or less a straight line then it is rather normal um, if the chakra in a way tilts downward then your desires tend to be focused on lower vibrations when, when the chakra tends to tilt upward it tends to be focused on higher vibrations so a normal second chakra 
is in a way looking for ways for you to continue your existence and to develop yourself. So it is looking for food, drink, air, rest, sleep, and it is looking for stimulation. And this can be emotional stimulation, physical stimulation, spiritual stimulation, mental stimulation. All these desires are in the second chakra. And when it is balanced, then you get a healthy mix of all these things. If it is tilted upward, then your desire is mainly focused on higher things. So you tend to forget about food, you tend to forget about drinking or resting or sleeping. And your only desire is, for instance, art or music or um, reading. So you're, in a way, focusing only on these higher desires and the lower desires become un less important. You don't focus on them as much. You're feeding yourself with higher vibrations, but the lower vibrations are, yeah, in a way, lacking. If the chakra focuses downward, you are actually focusing on things which will um, be more, not just maintaining you, but will be strengthening you. Um, often making you uh, stronger, more powerful. Um, so often it is very much about um, uh, physical domination, sexual domination, um, competition. So all these desires uh, yeah, to win, uh, to be stronger, uh, to be more dominant, uh, they are shown by the chakra focusing a little bit towards lower vibration. There can also be a discrepancy between the front end of the chakra and the rear. So the front end of the chakra is very much about what you are, um, in a way, projecting. Like, I want this, I'm looking for that. And ultimately these energies are projected by your spirit into your aura. And your aura, depending on the energies which are there, will attract certain people, certain events, to your path or will pull you towards certain places so you can have and find those experiences. The rear of the chakra is about absorbing energies and here it can become very dramatic. So you can for instance want and desire something and you can even attract it but then being unable to benefit by it. So this is a very tragic circumstance where you for instance you want to have a relationship so you attract that partner to you and these partners are in your environment they are what you want but somehow you're unable to open up to them or when you are together with them you're unable to be satisfied by them and this is usually because there is a mismatch between the front end and the rear of the chakra so if the front end of the chakra is not working, it is less of a problem because you're unable to desire something, you're unable to want something. And this may not be good, but usually you're not aware that you don't want something. You're only aware of the things you want, you're not aware of the things you don't want. But if the rear of the chakra is somehow unable to absorb the energies then it becomes very frustrating it can become a real torment where you just cannot get satisfaction what often happens is that when a person wants something a lot and they focus on getting it a lot so all the energy is focused on the front of the chakra because they want to get it they want to find it they want to have it in their life and the front end of the chakra becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and stronger so they will really have a powerful attraction and everybody will know will feel their need and their desire so they can respond to it but as a result of moving all the energy to the front there's no energy left in the back and if the back end of the chakra becomes too small too little it cannot process energies anymore and then you get a vicious circle where you cannot get something and you end up wanting it more and more and more and desiring it more and more and more. But 
the more you desire it, the less you're able to accept it or to get satisfaction from it. So unfortunately this is a very common problem when a person has been frustrated for a very long time. And it is usually that these frustrations are on a romantic level or sexual level or on a um, career level where people yeah, in a way, are growing, growing, growing. They become more and more powerful in the outside world. But ultimately they're unsatisfied. And because of the lack of satisfaction, they keep on going and they become very blind in pursuing their goals and pursuing their careers. And um, it's a never ending story. They can never get enough. And ultimately this also can be a form of addiction. And people can be very strongly addicted due to this imbalance in the second chakra. It can be a sexual addiction, it can be a food addiction, uh, it can be a career addiction. Just wanting to climb and get more and more power, but never having enough. The second chakra is also strongly influenced by the heart meridian and the small intestine meridians. And these Meridians have to do with faith, with confidence, trusting yourself and trusting others. And if these meridians are somehow not functioning well, you don't think you can open up to somebody else or you cannot trust yourself, you don't think you can get it or you're able to perform that role, then also the second chakra becomes very twisted. You have a desire, but at the same time you're saying to yourself, this is impossible to desire this or to get what I want or to get what I need. So at the same time you're wanting it and stopping yourself from wanting it and this usually creates a very twisted shape in the chakra. So often you will find that the chakra instead of being nice and round will go very irregular. Sometimes it is shaped a little bit like an 8 or it is squeezed or it becomes flat. So Often weird chakra shapes can result from uh, problems with your fire meridians, with a lack of trust or a damaged trust. And also this warped um, chakra, as you can imagine, is also not putting out a very clear image. It is not saying like, this is what I want, because you're in a way giving very mixed signals. You're in a way attracting something and also repulsing something at the same time. And um, often for the other per per people around you this can be very confusing because if it is for instance a partner you're attracting they will feel that you have an interest in them, you feel attracted to them and they will come closer and then they will feel that you're close to them, you don't allow them any space, you don't open up for the interaction and you in a way keeping them in the middle distance. You're not willing to let them go but you're not willing to allow them to come closer either. So this is often a symptom which you get from a misshapen second chakra. What we often find is that the uh, desires are often in the outer edges of the, uh, of the aura and the closer we get the more specific they are. So if you start feeling what is the second chakra telling you you will often find something very um, rudimentary um, towards the end and it gets more and more specific and more filtered the closer you get to the body. So in case of um, uh, a romantic desire, you want another person, not a dog, but a human. That would be more or less what you would feel here. Okay, get a little bit closer. Oh, you want a person of the opposite sex. Ah, you want a person who's more or less of the same age of the opposite sex. Not really young, not really old. More or less on, on your level of development. Okay, and then you can get closer. And Okay, you want this person to be very uh, fit in their body, a little bit sporting, an active person. Um, okay, you want this person to, to share interests with you. You want to be able to, to share the things you like and the things you enjoy so you can enjoy them more deeply and share your joy and then slowly but surely as you 
start feeling desires, you can get more and more specific as you go down. This is also in a way the process which you go through when you meet a person or you're trying to find something which will fulfill your desire. So often something will fulfill some basic level of the desire, but if it is not specific enough, ultimately the spirit will remain unsatisfied. So if you have a romantic desire, it is not about having dozens and dozens of lovers. It is about having the right lover. It's about having the person who really meets your desire, who really can feed your spirit, can touch your soul, and therefore create a real transformation in you. It's not just about maintaining your body and keeping going like food, but also the higher desires, the desires of the spirit to grow, to develop, to share, um, or to give, they're also in the second chakra. So I hope that this introduction will give you a little bit of an indication of the importance of the second chakra and some things you can look for. <laughs>